Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tennis Instead, the writer and director of Quantum Theory, as well as one of the founding members of the Eight Sided Players and Eight Sided Films. It's been quite a few months since my last developmental breakdown. The reason for which is that I have been, over the last couple of years, learning to live with a traumatic brain injury that I received on set about two and a half years ago now. I was struck in the head with a sword on a web series. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's syndrome, which is not Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's syndrome involves all the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, including the, the physical tremors, which in my case are mostly in my head and my arms, which you're not seeing right now, thank goodness. Um, vocal tremors, when my voice box isn't uh, responsive to control to the same degree that it usually is. Uh, my vowels get drawn out. I have trouble making consonants sometimes. And even now you're hearing I'm taking little pauses in my speech to take a minute to gather control of my voice box. And gait problems. I move a lot slower. I use a cane. My balance isn't as good as it used to be. Uh, and learning to live with these, these challenges to the degree that I feel comfortable presenting myself to you the audience on a regular basis has been an ongoing workload. <laughs> I'm now at the point where I think it's time I start blogging again. And the subject I want to cover today, and this is the question I like getting the most, frankly, because I think it gets to the heart of what makes our company special in the first place. How do you make movies with a disability like this? I, you know, have been told by more than one person that this is one of those events where you don't work anymore. This is one of those situations where your life changes very dramatically and you reprioritize. Obviously, I haven't. So, <laughs> how do I do it? One of the lessons that I've learned as I've edged towards my 40s is that in any high-risk endeavor, and certainly filmmaking qualifies as a high-risk endeavor as my own experience validates, the thing that makes us who we are, and the thing that defines our success, and the thing that defines our productions, and ultimately our creativity, isn't a conscious thing. It's not something that we decide, or at least it's not something we decide the day that we're gonna create something. And it's also not something as intangible as a creative spirit or, you know, divine influence of some kind. It's actually habit. The things that we do over and over and over and over again eventually become things that we do without thinking about them. And when we get surrounded by decisions and when we get overwhelmed even by circumstance or challenges or whatever the case may be, it's really the things that we do unconsciously that are going to define how successful we are at the thing we're attempting to accomplish overall. In my particular case, obviously, those challenges can come a lot more regularly. And what I've found is that it's the things I fall back on without thinking about that really have made it possible for me to continue working. It's the work ethic that I've worked tirelessly to build over the course of a 30-year career prior to this industry. It's the creative impulses that I have that are the product of training that's decades old at this point that I've continually revisited and worked on and worked on and worked on until I can do those things without thinking about them. And it's the fact that I've learned over the course of my creative life to trust those impulses and to let them happen. When my condition makes it hard for me to take in a lot of information very quickly or it makes certain social situations extremely challenging, those are, I, I know to take a deep breath and, and create a calm space in my own head so that I can let those habits do their work and take care of the bulk of what needs to get done so that I can focus on the things that I'm still not 100% confident about. And ultimately, when you look at how much work those habits accomplish on a daily basis, and you look at all the things that happen because we just do them ritualistically and we do them without thinking about them, it becomes very clear, I think, that the vast, vast, vast majority of the work and even the vast majority of those decisions that would define a project or define a career or define an artist, they're all automatic, pretty much. And the way that you develop yourself into somebody who can handle a situation 
like the challenges we're facing now in eight-sided films with my condition, or just the challenges of feature film production as an independent filmmaker, or, or the creative challenges that come with any particular project, all of those tools are ultimately locked away in the things that you've done again and again and again in the past. If you haven't practiced those tools to the extent that they're completely automatic and completely impulsive, then you're not ready for the, the bigger project that's gonna require all of those tools to just happen. So when you take a look at huge, huge movies, you know, and all the decisions that must go into them, and even all the delegation, and you look at how a filmmaker has this seemingly <laughs> it's supernatural grasp of all these variables simultaneously, that grasp is derived from the habits that that person has built. They're probably only actively making two out of seven decisions and the other five are just happening in their body. Somebody asks them a question, they tell them the answer and they move on without thinking about it. That's why and that's how I've been able to continue pushing my career forward. And it's really instilled in me an appreciation for, um, first of all, the fact that I have a classical theater education and the fact that I started picking up those habits that are going to serve me the best in my career at a very, very young age. And it's also given me profound respect and appreciation for the other people in my life who have also strived to develop those habits. It's forced me even to surround myself with people who, above and beyond anything else, whether I, whether our personalities are incredibly, you know, simpatico or whether we appreciate each other's life choices or whether we understand each other's life choices, the thing that connects is that we see habits in each other that we know we can rely on. That is how I've managed to continue producing quantum theory and expanding on the work that we do at Eight-Sided Films and producing web content and, and even, you know, wrote a blog about all the tools and systems that we use to make this work possible while living with a traumatic brain injury that is under many circumstances uh, prohibitive to this kind of work. And that is the end of this blog. I promise Lee and I promise you that I will be doing more vblogging in the future. You're probably getting, starting to show up a little bit. I can feel it in my neck. You're probably gonna see some of the, some of the tremors and things like that as the weeks roll on. So just bear with me, this is, this is part of my new relationship with the audience, and I, I thank you very much for your patience, and uh, and I look forward to getting every getting to know everybody anew. <laughs> this is Tennis instead, writer and director of Quantum Theory, signing off. <laughs>